Okay, ladies and gentlemen, forget about this, what you have heard. I'm, I'm not sure what the residents uh, speak about me, but you know how surgery is. Now, it's a, a big pleasure and an honor for me to be an invited lecturer, and um, I'm going to talk to you about extending the limits of pancreatic cancer surgery. Remember that uh, still nowadays, physicians and uh, outpatient doctors, when the diagnosis of pancreatic cancer comes up, then the answer is okay, no chance, death penalty cannot help, poor man will die soon. Now in 1989, uh, Michelassi from New York published a five-year survival after surgery of 5% for pancreatic cancer surgery. We have recently in the ESPAC uh, number four trial published in the Lancet a five-year survival of close to 30% after surgery. So this is the difference, ladies and gentlemen. And this was a single center, which is normally a better data, single center. But this was a big multi-center trial, so you can reach these figures in a multi-center trial. So what is then the problem of pancreatic cancer surgery? This you will find in this slide. This is also from SPAC 4 we recently published in JAMA Surgery about the 730 patients that were followed after the trial. And as you can see, local recurrence is 33% and local recurrence plus distal recurrence is seven. So in summary, we have 40% local recurrence after surgery for pancreatic cancer. So this is what I mean when I say surgeons are borderline, ladies and gentlemen. This is not good surgery, what we are doing. The senior in the room will remember rectal cancer uh, in the 1990s. We had a local recurrence rate of 35% in rectal cancer surgery all over the world. What is it now? Now rectal cancer local recurrence is 3%. So, what is your conclusion? That time we did the wrong operation, ladies and gentlemen. Definitely. Nowadays, we do uh, the Bill Healed operation, total mesorectal excision, and we have a local recurrence rate of 3%. So, this is just an example that something is wrong here in pancreatic cancer surgery. And when I speak to my colleagues from medical oncology or from gastroenterology, they criticize me for what the hell you are doing here with a local recurrence rate of 40%. You are doing something wrong. So if you take this message home, ladies and gentlemen, we have to change in what we do. And this is just an example of what we do. This is three months post-operative, and you see something here around the vessels. And then six months post-operative, this is more pronounced, and nine months post-operative, even more. So then this is diagnosed as local recurrence, ladies and gentlemen. But it is not local recurrence. It is persisting cancer that has not been removed. So if you please differentiate in the future, local recurrence is something that comes back after two years where nothing has been after a surgery with a CT scan or MR. Most of the local recurrence that we see is persisting cancer that has not been removed. This is our problem, ladies and gentlemen, in pancreatic cancer surgery. So therefore, together with some other surgeons, we have um, developed a triangle concept the triangle is the place where local recurrence happens. And I'm not sure how many of you have ever seen this. This is the triangle. This is the celiac trunk moving towards hepatic artery. This is the supermesenteric artery, and this is the portal vein, supermesenteric vein. And in between this is the triangle. And here is where local recurrence happens. So when you do the right type of pancreatic cancer surgery, you have to clean this field, ladies and gentlemen. Otherwise, you have a 40% local recurrence rate. I'm coming back to this in a while. 
Just giving you some other messages you know very well. So how can we become better in pancreatic cancer surgery? We have to centralize. We have to offer the patient a center, and this is well known. Recent article from the United States, going the extra mile for the center will pay out regarding your survival and your morbidity, mortality. The same has been true in the Netherlands. Our friends from the Netherlands, they really achieved a complete centralization in the whole country. And they have published this article, as you can see, the survival rate after pancreatic cancer surgery after centralization and before. This is before, this is after. So you can really increase your long-term survival in pancreatic cancer surgery if the patients go to the centers. I think this is also true for America and South America. It's true for everywhere. Now in Germany, we have achieved some kind of centralization. I have to say we have centers and most of the patients go there. One of the centers is Heidelberg, where I am responsible for. Since I'm there, we have done close to 12,000 pancreas operations. This is our monthly doing. We do 70 to 80 pancreatic resections per month. If you come to visit us, you will see three ripples per day and something like uh, 20 pancreatic resections per week. So you are all invited to come and we will show you our techniques. And if you stay with us for two weeks, you have seen probably uh, all what we can offer. Now, most of what we do is pancreatic tumors, 80%, 20% is chronic pancreatitis and others. Most of what we resect are head resections, close to 5,000. But then we also do a lot of left resections and total pancreatectomy has undergone a revival since we deal with main duct IP and M from the head to the tail, then this is uh, the operation of choice. Now, our overall mortality rate is 3%. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm becoming more and more criticized for that because I was told that in America, the big centers have an overall mortality of 1% to 1.5%. So my answer to that is, ladies and gentlemen, if you only operate on the easy cases, then you have an uh, operative mortality of in between no, 0 and 2%. If you operate on the demanding cases, including vascular resection, multi-organ resection, then you will still be below 5%, but you will not match the 1%. In my question, when I'm criticized accordingly, I ask the surgeons, what is your mortality? Then they tell me, my mortality is 1%. Then I say, no, 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 no. This is not your mortality. Your mortality in the ones you do not operate and that go for chemotherapy lifelong, your mortality is 100% in this group. So please, ladies and gentlemen, be differentiated when it comes to operative mortality. Now, my coworker Oliver Strobel has recently published, as I see it, an important article in the Annals of Surgery. It was about the real R status. You know, we discuss in America, Europe, all over the world, what is an R0? What is an R0? So the European proposal for an R0 is a distance of one millimeter to the cancer. We use this R0, and this is real R0, as you can see in these survival curves that have been generated in Heidelberg. If you do a real R0 in a pancreatic head cancer, then you have a 40-40 survival. This means 40 months median survival and 40% five-year survival. This is what you can reach if you do a real R0. Ladies and gentlemen, this is where we stand at this moment. You can make it to 40-40 with pancreatic head cancers. I was surprised, and we published this in the British Journal, that it is even better when you achieve an R0, a real R0, in a pancreatic body or left pancreatic cancer. Then you reach a 60-50, 60, 50, 60 uh, months median survival and 50% five-year survival. 
if you achieve an R0 in a pancreatic body cancer. So the future, ladies and gentlemen, is really there to improve our survival in pancreatic cancer surgery. However, and certainly there is not resectable patients, certainly. They are also existing in Heidelberg and they exist everywhere. This is, for example, a Heidelberg patient with a non-resectable pancreatic cancer that underwent a neoadjuvant treatment. In our hands, 60% of the patients respond well to neoadjuvant treatment and then you, they can undergo a curative surgery. Uh, we have shown this, that after a curative surgery, the survival is much better than after palliative treatment. But, ladies and gentlemen, you have to do the right operation. This is a patient after neoadjuvant and curative surgery, and you see the triangle here. This is the celiac trunk, supermesenteric artery, and in between is the triangle where local recurrence happens. Now, the number of lymph nodes is an important issue. I don't go into detail. We have recently published about 800 patients. And as you can see, it really counts whether you have zero or one lymph node involved or more than three or more than six. So local uh, advancement of pancreatic cancer has to do with lymph nodes. And the more lymph nodes are involved, the worse is the outcome. And therefore, we did find out within this trial that you need more than 24 lymph nodes to achieve an adequate staging in pancreatic cancer surgery. So don't be happy with 12 lymph nodes or 15. Ask your pathologist to provide at least 24 or better 30 or 40 lymph nodes after a radical pancreatic cancer surgery. Now recently we have developed some techniques in Heidelberg that I will shortly um, present to you in 2010, we published Artery First in the Journal of the American College of Surgeons. And Artery First is the principle now we use, ladies and gentlemen. We go behind the pancreas. This is the left renal vein. And exactly above the left renal vein is supermesenteric artery. And then we clean this area. You see left renal vein, supermesenteric artery, celiac trunk. And remember, in between is the triangle. This is supermesenteric vein. So this is the first step of the pancreatic cancer surgery. It is no longer what we have been trained. And many of you will still do open, see the pancreas, go under the pancreas above the portal vein, cut the pancreas, move it to your right side, put clamps, and finish. This is absolutely outdated, ladies and gentlemen. This is not a radical pancreatic cancer operation. Why is that the case? Because you leave so much tissue behind by putting these clamps that the local recurrence is already there after the surgery because it is persisting cancer. So we have to change in what we do in pancreatic cancer surgery. Now artery first has thereafter been described in very different manners. So you have six different artery first approaches and you can decide what, what you use. There's also a meta-analysis recently published about artery first in pancreatic duodenectomy. And what comes out in the meta-analysis that the patients have a better overall survival after the artery first approach. So there seems to be some, something true in what I told you. However, recently in the Annals of Surgery, there's a multicenter trial published about artery first that did not show an advantage. But ladies and gentlemen, um, the question is always in randomized trials, what is the end point? So the end point was an R0 resection. And interestingly, the patients had the same morbidity and mortality, whether artery first or non-artery first was done. If we do artery first and around the world, the patients have clearly a higher morbidity than the ones with the conventional uh, pancreatic duodenectomy. Therefore, I have doubts whether they have done a radical operation here, but we have to take these data serious. Now, we also have developed uncinate first, so our cutting 
through the pancreas above the portal vein is the last step of the operation. We normally start at uh, the duodenum, parse three, and then we move up with our dissection along the vessels. And only at the end, we transect the pancreas. This is shown here that at the end, the pancreas is still there above the portal vein, and then we transect here. And by that, we have done a radical operation because we travel along the vessels. When I was a young resident, I was taught never to see the vessels in a pancreatic cancer operation because this is dangerous. Never see the vessels, stay off the vessels. So what we do nowadays is the opposite, ladies and gentlemen. We first go to the vessels and then we travel along the vessels. So by that we can clean the field completely. And then also the triangle operation, which is something that I would recommend to you for the future. This is the operation we do after neoadjuvant treatment. Something that is very important. If you see this pancreatic cancer, you would say this is not resectable. Take your hands off. But after neoadjuvant treatment, it is quite frequently happening that you see the same that you have seen before neoadjuvant treatment. And then your radiologist might say it's the same, nothing has changed, but it is not the same, ladies and gentlemen. What we frequently see is the bulk that is so characteristic for pancreatic cancer, but the bulk is no longer cancer. It is the fibrous tissue where the cancer has been and after neoadjuvant, the bulk is still there, but the cancer has gone. So therefore, after neoadjuvant treatment, you can do this triangle operation quite easily by removing the remainder, the remainder of this fibrous bulk along the vessels, as you can see here. This is celiac trunk, supermesenteric artery, portal vein resected and end to end, and then the triangle here that you have cleaned to avoid local recurrence. Another example is this one that you regularly see after neoadjuvant treatment, your radiologist will tell you 360 degree cancer surrounding celiac axis and supermesenteric artery. But this is no longer cancer, ladies and gentlemen, after neoadjuvant treatment, for example, with folfirinox. It is just the fibrous bulk. And if you go on to do the triangle operation, this is the same patient, you can easily remove this fibrous bulk and then you check with frozen section whether there is still cancer there. And this is the celiac trunk again and the supermesenteric artery and the portal vein end to end resected. And this is the triangle that is clean to avoid local recurrence. So please, ladies and gentlemen, pancreatic cancer surgery has dramatically changed from the past to the future. We have to do something differently. Portal vein resection is standard of care. We do it in 20 to 30% of our patients. Recently, there has been a new classification uh, developed for portal vein resection, just a patch, an end-to-end -end, or a graft. We do this regularly. Thanks to our friends from, from uh, France, Jacques Belgitti is here at this meeting. They have developed an easy um, technique to replace veins, namely by just taking the parietal peritoneum. Remember the seniors in this room, you know, we become a little bit nervous if it comes to a vascular resection and we have no replacement, no vein, no artery, no nothing. We have become nervous in the past. We no longer become nervous because we have 100 square meter of veins in the abdominal cavity. This is the peritoneum. And the French surgeons, they really um, deserve the, the, the credit for this, as you can see here. You take the peritoneum and put a patch on the vein. You can also produce a new vein, etc. And we do this very regularly. This is a patch of the peritoneum on the supermesenteric vein. Then this is an infiltration of the portal vein junction and we do an end-to-end, -end, as you also do regularly. This is the end result of the end-to-end. -end. Once in a while we use a prosthesis, so this is a, a type 4. Once in a while we have to put back the, uh, the splenic vein into the portal vein. Once in a while this is not possible because 
the distance to the portal vein of the splenic vein is too far, then we put the splenic vein into the renal vein. And once in a while, the renal vein is too, uh, is, uh, too far away, then we use a graft to put the splenic vein back to the renal vein. So all of these kinds of measures are available. Now let's finish up with arterial resection. That is so controversial. When I spoke about arterial resection some 10 years ago, they removed me from the podium, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> meanwhile, meanwhile, so many people speak about arterial resection everywhere. You can hear it, and I show you the data. It's so interesting how pancreatic cancer surgery has evolved. We have developed the splenic artery replacement, which is so easy because you can use the splenic artery by, by transposing it to the uh, hepatic artery. You see this is here, this is behind this, the portal vein, the, the uh, splenic artery. And then you can also replace your hepatic artery with a graft. This is another example for a graft. This is the celiac trunk clamped. And then we use an iliac uh, artery graft, put it on here and put it to the both liver arteries, which is uh, very useful. And then you can also do an end-to-end -end supermesenteric artery when there is a two centimeter infiltration of the cancer. Now, when you have no more liver artery available like this, the stump is thrombosed, then we put the liver artery uh, into the portal vein. This works very well, and this is an escape if you have no more chance to replace the liver artery. And then we also do Appleby. I don't go into detail, ladies and gentlemen. I have only three minutes left. Arterial resection, when you do this, you have to inform your patients that the morbidity mortality is higher. You have to tell them when we do an arterial resection, your mortality will go up, your mortality risk will go up to 10%. Whoever I have spoken to as a surgeon, everybody said, do it, do it, because this is my only chance. Because you know the mortality when you don't do uh, arterial resection is 100%, because palliative treatment has never cured any patient. Now, I told you that meanwhile, you see many articles about arterial resection. This is Marco Del Chiaro, who works in Denver. It was about 73 patients with arterial resection recently published. This is what he does. You see here the supermesenteric artery end-to-end -end and the portal vein end-to-end. -end. And then a better survival after arterial resection than after palliation. The same comes from the Mayo Clinic, recently published about 111 patients with arterial resection. You see what they do. They take a Y graft that you normally use to replace the aorta and put it on the hepatic artery as well as on the supermesenteric artery and you see that the field is clean. And what they show, and this is very honest, ladies and gentlemen, if you start with arterial resection, then your in-hospital mortality is 30%. But after 10 years, your in-hospital mortality goes down to 9%. So arterial resection has a learning curve. I finish up, ladies and gentlemen, all kind of surgery can only be good if you do multimodal treatment. So all what I have shown to you is together with chemotherapy, either before or after the surgery. We have founded the SPAC uh, group where we have done so many trials that have shown that adjuvant chemotherapy is helpful but adjuvant chemo radiotherapy is harmful. I'm always surprised that in your country here in America, they still do adjuvant chemo radiotherapy because we have proven in a big trial that this is not helpful. Now recently we published SPAC4 that shows that the survival is better when you use gemcitabine plus capecitabine, but then the most recent and very important is this trial here, the Brodite trial, where they have used adjuvant fulfirinox with fascinating survival data. You see, ladies and gentlemen, the five-year survival after adjuvant fulfirinox is 50% after pancreatic cancer surgery plus fulfirinox. 
This is the best data that have ever been published. This is in a randomized control trial. This is not a single center. So I think the future, ladies and gentlemen, is on our side. If we do the right type of surgery together with a chemotherapy before or after the surgery, we have an expectation of half of the patients to uh, have a long-term survival. Thanks for your attention.